Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm of course Big Bale, and in today's video, we're going to be looking at the difference between Super Archer and Super Wizard Blimps. More specifically, which one to use in which situation. So, both of them, Super Archers and Super Wizards, have got their perks. Super Wizards are great for not quite melee range, but close range battle. Um, that chain that you get from them as well, unbelievably strong. Super Archers can fire at extremely long range, so they can take out a good chunk of a base, even half of a base, depending on the layout, without even moving from their original spot. So uh, both have benefits. Um, let's try and figure out which one is best to be used in which situation. So I put some thought into this, and I figured the best way that I could demonstrate this to you is by showing you the same bases being hit by each of the blimp types and talking through the, the value and ultimately weighing up which one was best and why. So we'll start off with this one, which is a Super Wizard Blimp, otherwise known as a Blizzard. And we're going to be hitting this teaser base right here. So we'll start off Blimp straight onto the Town Hall because we know that these Super Wizards don't have superior range. But we do know the chain value you can get as a uh, nice, nice little bit of value here in the town hall compartment. We can realistically take down everything in the area and the town hall. I suppose that would be everything in the area, wouldn't it? But um, yeah, you can see here, guys, we're getting the job done. Invis is dropped in and cleared out the nine o'clock compartment minus a ground bow. Not a huge threat because the troop comp that we're using to follow up on this just for experimental purposes is a pretty standard Hydra. So we've got the King and Queen dropped in over at eight o'clock. We've got the pathing kind of already set. So the town hall and everything in that comp's gone down. So that's actually really helping us out a great deal here. It's meaning that we don't have to worry about a chunk of the base. The pathing is sort of ready made for us anyway. We've already got that entry point for the Hydra. And the King and Queen, their job is ultimately just to move in with the Hydra and try and get us a little bit more value as we push through. So Hydra's working through, you can see the Town Hall compartment's gone, so we don't have to worry about that, which is now moving into the Eagle compartment, which is where, admittedly, there's a lot of danger. Um, but one thing that I will point out here, guys, is that we only had to use four Invis and a Rage. So that's six housing space of spells that we've used to uh, get you know, what I'd consider a pretty reasonable amount of value. We've got the uh, Hydra pushing through again. The reason why I chose this army for experimental purposes is because it's so, so strong and because I know that I can easily follow up on either of these two blimps with this particular comp. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Hydra, we don't have too much of it left. We've got a Dragon Rider and a Dragon. We've got a Royal Champion and we've got the Queen. So, you know, we're not exactly killing it here. It's not complete overkill but it's a pretty robust three star with a swagged queen ability. So, I, you know, that was decent. We got some good value over at nine o'clock. Um, it really set the tone for the battle. And again, it did mean that we had enough room to have an invis left over with some rages and freezes. So we weren't caught short later in the attack, which is ultimately you could argue the main part of this push. So three star swag queen ability. Beautiful. So next up, I'm going to show you the Super Archer Blimp and we'll see how that fares on this particular base type. Now, with the Blizzard or the Super Wizard Blimp, we landed it straight on the Town Hall. What you're going to notice here is that you cannot get away with it. So I'm going to drop the Blimp short of the Town Hall and we have to come in at a bit of a weird angle to make that happen. So uh, you can see a little trick there with the invis over the air defense to pull the hound down. And we're going to drop that blimp just north of the town hall. Reason why we have to do this, guys, is because if you drop that blimp straight on the town hall, unlike with super wizards where it's uh, directional projectiles, these are directional shots that do damage to everything that they touch. So if we drop the super archers directly on the town hall, that town hall is going to go down before we have realized the super archers full value. Now, we're looking at the value that we got from the Super Archers over and above the Blizzard. There's definite extra damage done. That's indisputable. No arguments here. Is the extra damage done justifying the extra cost? So you can see we've got no spells left, guys. When it comes to deploying the Hydra, we've got no spell support whatsoever. And that is, uh, it's not worrying. Don't get me wrong, on the right basis, that can be just fine. No issues at all. But it does mean that we've got no rage, no freezes to support us pushing through the base. 
So um, for me, I would say on this particular base type, it's probably a little bit too early to give a final thought on it, but this is just me giving my musings as we go on. I've got to say, I think the Blizzard actually offered better value. Half the amount of spells used took out all of the same meaningful structures. But for me, I, I don't really see any way of arguing against that. So, um, you can see here, we are still looking pretty strong regardless. Even though we've got no spells, we are pushing through nicely with the Hydra. We're taking a different approach. And the main reason for that is because the extra value that we got from the Super Archers, taking out some of the structures over at 1030, it meant that we were much better equipped to sue in with the King and Queen and ultimately create that pathing for the uh, Hydra to push through from 2 o'clock. So it's looking really strong. We're looking pretty good right now. Um, arguably, arguably stronger than we did with the Blizzard. Now that may make you think, but Big Veil, vale, if we're actually looking better with this than we were with the Blizzard, then surely it's a better approach. That's kind of subjective. It really is. But for me, like I said, my reasoning behind it is looking at how much extra value we got for six extra, uh, was it six or seven extra spells? Whatever. It was a lot of extra spell space. For me, it just doesn't seem enough. It doesn't seem like we got enough extra out of it to justify using all those extra spells. So you may disagree, but that's just my personal opinion. So when you're looking at teaser bases, and don't get me wrong, the places that I drop the blimps aren't the only places you can drop them. They're just the best ones that I found when aiming to try and get the town hall down. Um, it seems like Blizzard is probably the better choice on this base style. Before we move on to looking at the next base, I just want to point out uh, something that's quite key when it comes to placement of your blimp. So if you're not dropping it straight on top of the town hall, you're going to be wanting to drop it somewhere that you can get maximum value. Now there's two things that you really have to avoid when it comes to doing that. One is dropping it straight on top of a bomb tower. That's going to be insta-death for your super wizards or super archers. Doesn't matter what it is, they're going to go down. So don't drop your blimp straight on top of a bomb tower. It's not worth it. Or whip for that matter, immediately next to one either. Try and avoid them all together if you can. The next one is if you see an open space in the base that's got room for maybe a giant bomb, don't drop the blimp next to it. Drop the blimp directly on the giant bomb. Because you have uh, five barbarians inside that blimp, those barbs will trigger the giant bomb if there is one before your super archers or super wizards come out. It's going to mean that your super archers and wizards manage to survive for the uh, duration of the attack. They don't get wiped out really early on and you'll get just maximum value from them. It saves you swag in your blimp, which is something that a lot of people fall into the trap of. Now, I recognize that teaser bases aren't the only bases you're going to see, so I figured I'd throw one more base type in here, just again, to make it as a, a fair experiment as possible. So we're going to start this off with a blizzard on a anti-3 base. So we land the blimp. Again, I'm dropping it straight on the town hall. Just so you know, that's not the only place you can drop these blimps. It's just the bases that I had in front of me. It seemed like the best option to get maximum value. So you can see we're actually taking out a ton of a ton of the base here everything in that central compartment gone it's gone so um yeah super wizards taking the town hall down we got the cc pull pretty decent and we've got a nice line working down from 12 towards nine o'clock as well um that we could potentially send a hydra in if we wanted to king gets dropped in over at three we're pulling the hound over queen with the king and the queen will deal with the hound and the pups, as well as the poison. That'll give a bit of an assist too. Hydra now coming in. So notice I, I chose not to send the Hydra in against the single Inferno. Main reason for that, guys, and this isn't really related to the blimps. That's more related to uh, common sense. It's just that we're approaching the eagle a lot earlier coming from that direction. So getting that eagle down, absolutely critical in most attacks where you've got uh, masses of troops working together. Just because that eagle, it causes those three shot bombardments that will do crazy damage to clumps of troops. So we're pushing through, looking pretty strong, everything going nicely. And it was all set up by that uh, blizzard, taking out the town hall comp and creating again that natural pathing for us, working through from two to six to nine then back up again towards 12. So yeah, Blizzard actually has a lot of value to it here. And one thing that you're finding from this video guys, and don't get me wrong, I was never expecting it to be any different, 
is that both blimp types have their merits. Both blimp types can offer different values. Um, they have different benefits to them. For Blizzard, for me, I feel it's better used if you've got a lot of structures really close up together. So you can get nice, nice value, like in that town hall compartment, taking out most of what's there, just because it's all within reaching distance of the, uh, the uh, Super Wizards. Super Archers, as you're going to see when we show you the replay on this very same base with the Super Archer Blimp, they have much, much better range and can actually offer a lot more value in the right situation. So you can see here we've got a few dragons up. The queen is still going with her ability. The king's still rocking on through. And this base is pretty much toast here, guys. The base is gone. We know it's going to be a three star. GG, well played. All set up by that blizzard straight on top of the town hall. So again, I'm going to mention it once more. You don't have to drop your blimp straight onto the town hall. That's not the only way to do it. It's just how I chose to do it for the experiment and to make sure we guaranteed that Town Hall takedown. And here we go with the Super Archer Blimp variant. So we go in and we're not going to land it again on the Town Hall because that would not make sense. So we're just going to send that Blimp in and try and get it into that single Inferno compartment. Because the way I see it, given the range of those Super Archers, we can get insane value from them there. Added benefit, we actually pulled two Seeking Air Mines too, which is really going to help the Hydra out. So Super Archers planted right above the Town Hall. You can see those blue lines, I guess. I don't know what they are. They're firing off in all directions. And you can see already the value that we're getting here over and above what we saw from the uh, Blizzard. So we're taking out the Town Hall. We're taking out everything in the top side. And not only that, we still have Super Archers standing. Admittedly, most of them are cloned and will die soon after the value has been realized. So looking at what we've got here, you've taken out the whole top half of the base. The entire top half of the base is gone. Rip, gone. So this makes it a lot easier when trying to plan your pathing out. And because, you know, we had an extra invis left over, we didn't need to use our freeze early on. We're left over with a couple of spells too. So this is actually even more efficient than the first one that we did. And you saw how crushing that was. So Hydra is pushing through from 10 o'clock and it's just working its way in a V-shape through the base. King and Queen are working as a Sui as you normally would to be fair. One thing that I would say, I know this video isn't really about the Hydra, but typically it would be good to send the King from 9 through to 6 in this situation. Just to clear out the trash buildings and just make sure the dragons stay inside. But you know what, it kind of works anyway, so whatever, it's no big deal. Another negative, of course, we don't have a poison spell to support with the CC. You're kind of banking on the Hydra being able to deal with that in this situation. Uh, but yeah, it's fine. You can see the que uh, Queen clearly got through the Hound and the Pups with no real issues. And bonus points, the Queen moves in, takes out the RC and a Sweeper. We still have a little Super Archer that could over in the top of the base. You can see it there. And the Hydra is just continuing its push around. Again, really strong. So again, we're talking about the value of each blimp type and when to use them. Um, Super Archer Blimp, use it when you've got a lot of buildings within range of a certain point on the base. You don't want those Super Archers running around the base. You don't want them covering, I don't know, 10, 15 tiles because that maximize the chances of them running across a giant bomb. And you don't want that. You don't want your Super Archers dying because that is a massive, massive waste of a huge investment. But yeah, if you can drop them somewhere that they're going to be in an enclosed space or maybe not even enclosed, somewhere that's um, just pretty easy to reach, uh, multiple structures, go for it. Super Archer Blimp is probably the right choice and you can get a ton of value with it. Again, if you're looking to try and get that closed off value, you've got a small area that you want to completely obliterate, a blizzard is probably the right choice. And just like that, we now know when to use super archers and when to use super wizards in our blimp. So um, both really strong, as I said, I am an advocate for both of these blimp styles. I'd recommend using them if you're carrying out a Hydra or even a Lalo, really good with Lalo, or even Super Dragons if you're still using that giant orange spammy troop. So whatever is your poison, Blizzards or Super Archer blimps can still offer you all the value that you could ever possibly need um, in the right situation. Okay, so guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to smash the like button. 
Also drop a comment to let me know if you've got any added thoughts around this approach. Now, this hasn't been completely comprehensive. There's loads and loads more that I could have said, but you know, it's not easy to make a video covering every single key point when it comes to these uh, particular approaches. And I'd rather not inundate you with information and just give you the basics that you need to make the decisions yourself. So uh, guys, thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you don't already. I do release content every single day, whether it's in a live stream or a video. There's always going to be fresh content on the channel. Until next time, much love. Big Veil is out.